engine building, bag management, lines of Lydia coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant and Stella from Meeple University. Today we'll talk about Lions of Lydia. I played this game first at Gamma 2020. It was at mm. Reno mm. Uh, with the designer Johnny Pack. So uh, that was a prototype. Went to Kickstarter. Now it is fulfilled, published, and available. Yes, and I played it later than you, but I have, yeah. of course, yes. played it. Of course, so we're going to talk about how the game plays, overview, and then what we think of it. Yes. So the game is, it's kind of a hand management with a, a deck bag element. Mm. So uh, in this little pouch, you begin the game with a meeple of each of the four colors. See in there, Ooh. meeple of each of the four <laughs> yes. colors. And you'll always have four meeples in this bag. So on each turn, you draw a meeple at random, and then you place it in one of five locations on the board. If you place it at a gate, then you gain resources based on everything else at that gate. So here, for example, I would get a blue for the gate and a green for the other meeple at the gate. Um, and if you've got certain cards already, so it's a card and engine building game, if you've got a certain type of meeple, or basically if you get a combination between a certain meeple and a certain gate, then you'll get some other bonus. And as the game goes on, if you really specialize, you can get stacks and stacks of resources from just putting one meeple at the right gate. Yep. Then once you've resolved the gate, you pick up one of the meeples from the fountain and put it back into your bag. And uh, the meeples stay there until they go into the middle. So whenever they're, after you've done a turn, if there are two meeples of a given type at a gate, then they uh, mosey on down into the middle. The other thing you can do is when you draw your meeple, ignore its color and just place it at the fountain and that lets you either buy cards with your resources or upgrade cards with your resources. And so you can buy as many cards as you want from one of the four sides of the board. Again, they all have a, a resource or a coin cost on them. Um, or all of those cards have that same cost to upgrade and you can uh, if I had two, uh, two red here, I could pay those and flip this over. And that's really the majority of the game. Uh, some of these, it's all about getting good combos out of these, getting good points because they will level up as you upgrade them. Uh, gold meeples will come into the game as cards get purchased. And when you place with a gold meeple, you can change one of your resources into gold. Uh, which is wild, so it's a good way of making things wild. Uh, you get to... There's an important element of maxing out your resources, because once you max out a column, you get to increase this track, and this track lets you get more cards. So at the mm. start of the game, you can only actually hold three cards, uh, but as you level this up, you can mm. get up to nine cards, and then start mm. to unlock a whole lot of points. Or you can upgrade for free, you can flip for free, <coughs> yes. alternatively. Yep. You also get that once you go down, and then when you go up again, you get it. But it's not as easy as you look, of like, oh, I just thought, can you do that? Can you drop one at least and then go up? Yep, but then, you know, if you change the coins, you have changed all of your uh, things to the yep. coin, by the way. It's not just one. Yep, so it still takes a couple of actions to get it done, even yep. if you're optimizing it. Mm -hmm. uh, the game has limits on all the resources, 12 coins and 6 of one of these, yep. so you can't just hoard and, good, yeah. and buy everything mm -hmm. at once. And it has a few models, modules. We used two of them, is it two? one, one of the modules yep. last time. Yep, I think there's eight modules. Yeah. There's a lot of different modules in there just to it's add little, little bits of mm -hmm. uh, little differences to the game, little other ways of scoring. Mm -hmm. And also flexibility. Yes. So that thing that we use, what was that? Um, we can... use, yeah, we use one where Pet you could store one meeple permanently yep. um, and swap mm -hmm. it out. So it gave you a flexibility little bit of mitigation for the randomness of the bag. Yeah. And yeah, that's basically it. The game will go until someone's got a certain number of upgraded buildings and that mm -hmm. will trigger the end and then everyone will score. So what do you think, Tarrant? 
it's not too bad. It's um, it's an engine building sort of. It's engine building. Yeah. It's very quick, which is nice. The choices are quite simple. So this whole this whole element rotates through very quickly. We have more um, um, more carts that you know yep. use randomly each game. Yep, you don't have to think too hard about the actions, which means the downtime isn't uh, isn't too bad. Um, I did find that the you know, the random element of the bag was frustrating. It was one of the it was mitigable, but it was frustrating. So in a way, okay. Yeah, yeah. if you like to plan your game out. Yeah, but it's like deck building or back building. You could you could be frustrating as well with yeah. the thing that you draw, right? Yeah, and it is sort of a bag management. And I did find that as I was going through the game, I basically was focusing on two colors and all my cards upgraded mm. with those two colors. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, I wouldn't say it was a, I wouldn't say it was an outstanding game, but it's very playable and nice sort of entry, mid-entry filler type of thing. Right. And also the next, um, sorry, the, uh, the person who triggers the end of the game will get the fountain. And that means that one coin worth one point, otherwise coins worth nothing. Yes. But thank you for sharing your opinion. I actually like it because um, I, I mentioned earlier, I played first uh, at Prototype. I was like, wow, this game is really good. Um, actually more than like it, actually. Um, it's, you probably need to play, um, I play more than once. And I think that once you kind of like know what's going on, but I know my first experience was good. Like Jen Johnny was with me, we were playing together and we've got, I think it was like three players or four players. I can't remember. Anyways, uh, I think that just trying to match what will work best for your strategy is good and whether you want to upgrade the, um, this one as well for points and well, you have to upgrade at some, at some points because you need to get more cards, yes. but, or you want to upgrade, do you want to maximize in buying things when you buy, um, do you want to, it's kind of like, sort of like, slightly tough decision at times where you want to do this or that, it's like, oh, do you want to do this or that and that and that, it's pretty quick, um, it's yeah. only a little bit AP sometimes, but mostly quick, that part I like. Yeah, I do think one of the things I found, um, and Maybe all games are paced this way, maybe they're not, but certainly when you can only hold three cards and when you can only hold five cards, uh, pushing your way up to the end here is gradual mm. because you're not getting heaps and heaps of bonuses. Mm. Once you hit this eight and nine, I did find that you could really roll things through and the, the couple of players who got to that eight and nine first um, ended up with a lot more points. They were probably yeah. only two or three turns ahead of the other mm. players. So you know, what you see on the score pad is uh, not a true reflection of the closeness of the game, but there definitely was an escalation there. Escalation, that's right. Yeah, it was pretty <coughs> slow to begin with, but then towards the end, oh my gosh. And I, I think I remember my game. I, I'm pretty sure I I'm pr probably took this, but I didn't necessarily win because you took, you, I think you take it and then other players will get one more turn but you. Yeah, last time yeah. I played, I took I took that. I yeah. triggered the end because I had lots of points, mm. but I had to spend all my coins to actually trigger it. So yeah. I didn't have any coin points for it. I just stopped anyone mm -hmm. else from getting it and stopped anyone else from... From scoring from coins. Do it. Both yeah. from scoring from coins and from having more than one more turn. Yeah, that's actually true. So I, I really think that it's, it's a nice one. There's a the engine building part, so you can activate, we get more stronger action when you activate, but others are more end game points where you... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there are some end game point ones. These purple ones, they cost coins mm -hmm. and you get points based on certain resources or certain types mm -hmm. of cards. And even if you upgrade it, you get even more points, like that one six yes. per two um, of the red resources. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I reckon it's a it's a pretty. I seriously think it's a pretty solid game. Um, I really like that engine engine building element to it and tough decision. That's usually my favorite, like the engine build and tough decision. So I wish you like it more. Maybe a few more plays with different modules. Yeah, for me the engine build was fine. I didn't find the decisions that tough because they were pretty much determined by what I pulled out of here. No, uh, not really. Like, what do you want to buy? Whether you want to upgrade here or upgrade there. I don't know, it's mine anyway. True. Anyways, have you played it? Did you make it? What do you think of it? Let us know in the comment sections. 
maybe you can help me change tones. Well, I mean, you don't not like it, but um, be kind of like neutral-ish on yeah. it. Yeah, but I like it. So I want to I wanna play more. So I want to try to get down to play more. So let us know in the comment sections what you think of it, um, or even any other games that is similar to this. I still think it's a, it's a pretty solid mechanics. It's straightforward, pretty solid. There's not li really little bits and pieces, like a lot of rules. The rules are pretty simple. Yes. Um, and that's it. Um, hopefully you find this useful. And if you do, please hit that like button and subscribe to us if you haven't already done so. Uh, we also, well, I'm also on Instagram, so hopefully we'll, you'll find me there too. I'll find you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in my next, our next videos. Bye.